Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all denarians on the go and in the know. Like subscribe and share to help support the channel. Pick up your free trial copy of the Currency Exchange Planner and check out the all-new Currency Exchange Planner Companion, voted the number one pre- and post-RV planning tool for the dinar and cryptocurrency communities. Also, download your free blockchain-based secure Brave browser, and get paid in crypto to surf the internet today. You can find the links to these and other valuable sites in the description below. First article of interest for today. Source. Al Qazemi will present his government program to Parliament within 10 days. An informed political source revealed that the Prime Minister designate, Mustafa Al Qazemi, will present his government program to Parliament within 10 days. The source told Al Akbaria that the Prime Minister designate, Mustafa Al Qazemi, will choose the ministerial formation and write the government program to present it to the presidency of the House of Representatives within a maximum period of 10 days. He added, al Qazemi chose to specify the names of his cabinet, which includes a large number of competent personalities and they have never held any political position. Next article of interest. Deputy. Almost political consensus to expedite the granting of the al Qazemi government. On Friday. MP Abdel Khalik Medhat confirmed that there is almost a political consensus to expedite the granting of al Qazmi's government confidence. Medhat said in an interview with Information that there is almost a political consensus to support the passage of Mustafa al Qazmi's government and speed up its granting of confidence, especially as the country faces a series of major crises, especially the coronavirus the collapse of the oil market and its significant economic repercussions on the budget. Medhat added, there is political optimism that al Qazimi will succeed in writing a government within a limited period of time in order to continue to follow up on important files. He pointed out that, our demands, and we are part of the Sunni political forces, are the reconstruction of the liberated areas, the return of the displaced, the response to the demands of the demonstrators, the creation of a partnership in the governmental decision, and the fight against financial and administrative corruption. Next article of interest. The Iranian Central Bank sends a message to the international criticism on Corona's aid. In a letter he sent to the head of the International Monetary Fund, Iran's Central Bank Governor Abdel Nasser Hamadi stressed Iran's right to receive financial aid from the fund, in light of the outbreak of the coronavirus. Hamdi said in a post through his account on the social networking site, Instagram, about a month ago after the International Monetary Fund announced its willingness to provide unconditional support to countries suffering from the spread of the coronavirus, Iran requested to obtain this support based on its right in this area, except that there are people outside the International Monetary Fund who are working to deflect this legitimate request. According to what the United States claimed regarding the exemption of the Instex mechanism and even the Swiss financial channels, SHTA, from the unilateral U.S. embargo, these mechanisms allow for the exchange of humanitarian aid within the framework of the support that will be provided by the International Monetary Fund to Iran, he said. He pointed out my concern to the American rejection of the International Monetary Fund assistance to Iran and wrote that European countries and the rest of the world started using these two mechanisms, expressing his hope that the American refusal would not affect the reputation of the International Monetary Fund and its performance of providing assistance to member states, especially Iran. My concern is that Iran is determined to proceed with its request within the framework of Rapid Financial Guarantee, RFI and it is likely that the International Monetary Fund will respond to the Iranian request quickly. The number of people infected with coronavirus in Iran reached 66,220, while 4,110 deaths were recorded, while the number of people recovering from the virus was 32,309. Next article of interest. The U.S. State Department, a major Iranian threat to our forces in Iraq. U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for Near East Affairs David Schenker said that the threat of Iranian-backed factions to American forces in Iraq was still significant, 
about a week after President Donald Trump warned of an attack on Iran or its proxies. Speaking to reporters at a conference call today, Friday, Shinker did not provide details of the threat, but stressed that he was still significant. Armed groups regularly bombed bases hosting American forces in Iraq as well as the area around the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. Three Qatush rockets landed days ago near an area in southern Iraq that includes workers for foreign oil companies, including American oil services company Halliburton. There were no reports of casualties or damage. Last week, Trump said Iran or its proxies had planned an attack on U.S. targets in Iraq and warned that they would pay a very high price, but gave no details. Hostility has been marred by us Iranian relations since the Islamic Revolution toppled the U.S.-backed Iranian Shah in 1979 and Iran entered an era of recovery when there was a breakthrough in the 2015 Iranian nuclear deal. Relations deteriorated after Trump's decision nearly two years ago to abandon this multilateral agreement and restore imposing U.S. sanctions that paralyzed the Iranian economy. Earlier this week, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said that the United States proposed a strategic dialogue with Iraq in June, in an effort to improve strained bilateral ties. Shinker emphasized that Baghdad needs to take steps if it is building the Washington partnership. He previously said in March that Washington was deeply disappointed in Iraq's performance in protecting the U.S.-led coalition forces. He said, if the Iraqis value this relationship, they should take certain steps, and this includes providing protection for the coalition forces present in Iraq, if they want these forces to remain. Yesterday, the Iraqi president assigned the head of Iraqi intelligence, Mustafa Akazemi, to head the cabinet, to become the third person to be chosen to lead Iraq in 10 weeks, while Iraq finds it difficult to form a new government after the collapse of the previous government under the weight of the protests that continued for months. Shankar commented on al Qazemi's choice. If al Qazemi is an Iraqi nationalist committed to achieving sovereignty for Iraq and fighting corruption, it will be a great thing for Iraq and we think it will be great for our bilateral relationship. Next article of interest. Money is undergoing a global reset. Money is a shared fiction. Our mechanism for storing and exchanging agreed upon units of value, a tool so powerful that wars are fought over it, springs entirely from our collective imagination. Some might find that unnerving. The age old desire to attach a currency's value to something earthly, precious and finite is partly founded on a false hope that these tokens, in which we place such faith, have intrinsic value. It's an understandable instinct, and there's a strong gold standard argument for curtailing the sovereign's power to debase people's savings. But the sense of innate value is just a belief. As with people's beliefs in other ephemeral concepts in religion, for example, or in the concept of a nation, the ones most difficult to challenge are those fundamental to society. Indeed, one could argue that if everyone were to acknowledge that money is a fiction, it would cease to function. The imaginary nature of money is not a weakness, however, it's a strength. As Israeli historian Yuval Harari, author of the seminal, Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind, explains, our capacity to conceive of and commonly believe in stories is the primary reason why we humans rule the earth, instead of, say, the chimpanzees. It's what enabled us to organize into communities and, ultimately, to build civilization. The modern world is a direct outcome of our capacity, not just to imagine, but to imagine together. Now, as a terrifying pandemic forces a retreat from globalization and challenges the foundations of the international capitalist order, society could be in for one of its periodic narrative shifts, a sweeping reimagining of its core tenets. Our idea of money, which Harari describes as the most successful story ever invented and told by humans, could experience the most significant transformation of all. Our money narrative was already gearing up for a new act, even before an omnipresent antagonist called COVID-19 was added to the cast of characters. That's because an intense competition was underway to establish a programmable standard for digital currencies. 
This radical new model will replace banknotes with what author David Birch calls eCash and enable software commands within a device-driven, peer-to-peer system of value exchange that bypasses gatekeeping banks. The race was kick-started by the invention of Bitcoin 11 years ago. It now involves thousands of competitors. To start with, we users, individuals, businesses and governments will be offered a much wider choice as the world moves toward a multipolar, multi-currency structure. Nonetheless, there will be fierce competition to establish dominant standards across multiple alternatives. It's a diverse field, encompassing decentralized, standalone currencies such as Bitcoin, decentralized, algorithmically managed, stable coins such as DAI, reserved backed stable coins built on open, permissionless blockchains such as Circle and Coinbase. Poxos and Tether, new, privately defined stable coins built on permissioned blockchains such as Facebook's Libra, and, last but not least, central bank digital currencies, CBDCs, such as China's digital currency electronic payment, DCEP, system. The stakes in this battle are high. On the line are the balance of geopolitical power the public versus private boundaries of our economies and the value we place on transactional privacy. The pandemic has given this all and game even more urgency. As central banks flood the world with monetary stimulus, setting the stage for a more familiar currency war in which countries weaponize foreign exchange depreciation to give their industries an advantage over others, the dollar-centric international monetary system will come under stress. The Federal Reserve cannot indefinitely be the world's lender of last resort for everything and everyone, not without undermining its independence and threatening global confidence in American leadership. So, yes, a reimagining is coming. Hit the like and subscribe button to be alerted as more videos are posted. Be sure to check out the Denarian blog, Facebook and Twitter as I also update daily on those platforms as well. Before you leave pick up your free trial copy of the newly upgraded Currency Exchange Planner and check out the all-new Exchange Planner Companion. Use the promo code, the Denarian, to get 25% off at checkout when you decide to unleash the full planner's abilities, along with the mobile application added free for a limited time. The links to these and other invaluable websites are available in the description box below this video. Knowledge is power. Using that knowledge is powerful, over and out for now, the Denarian.